let's try and find out how those small, early dinosaurs evolved into these giant creatures. Clues lie in the basement vaults of the Natural History Museum in London, where resident paleobiologist Paul Barrett has been studying a trivial-looking fossil that's languished unseen for the last 90 years. We often find ourselves going through the drawers and seeing things we haven't seen ourselves before. So we've had a large number of surprises here in the basement. Surprises like this? Long assumed to be little more than the remains of a reptile, these unassuming bones turned out to be something very special indeed. This rather insignificant looking specimen is actually the only evidence that we have for this enormous great group of animals, the dinosaurs, first appearing on Earth. These are the remains of the earliest dinosaur yet discovered. But how do we know it was a dinosaur? The biggest clue actually comes from this bone here. This bone is called a humerus. It's the upper arm bone. And what makes it a dinosaur is this huge flap of bone along one of its edges. Other reptiles that live alongside dinosaurs, crocodiles and their relatives, lack this feature. So we are looking almost certainly at the earliest dinosaur. They were found on an expedition to Tanzania 90 years ago, and they're from an animal called Nyasasaurus, after the lake it was discovered near. So once we'd identified those key features of the skeleton as dinosaur features, our idea that this is something to do with the origin of dinosaurs actually started to come together pretty quickly. With just an upper arm and six vertebrae to work from, Nyasasaurus was rebuilt. And it wasn't the supersized monster we're accustomed to. At a mere two meters long, a meter high and just 60 kilos, it was smaller than a man. But Nyasasaurus did have one advantage over the reptiles it shared the world with. It was two-legged. One of the key things about dinosaurs that distinguishes them from all other reptile groups is that they went walking on two legs only very early in their evolutionary history. A bit like this animal here, Allosaurus, one of the meat-eating dinosaurs. And this really opened up a huge variety of new ways of life that were previously inaccessible to the other four-legged reptiles. These included things like being able to support greater weight, being able to move faster, and being able to move more efficiently. And this might be one of the key features that dinosaurs became so successful. And with success came a great opportunity for growth. Because Nyasasaurus may have been small, but as they say, from little acorns, giant oak trees grow. So on the floor in front of me is the thigh bone of a sauropod dinosaur from the Jurassic period. So one of the much later dinosaurs, and we can already see, much, much bigger than the very early dinosaurs like Nyasasaurus. And they reached those quite large body sizes only a few million years after they started to take over the Earth. Incredible to think that these two huge beasts, so different in size and appearance, both evolved from those small ancestral Nyasasauruses.